All right, joining me now on Inside TBT, making his return, J.P. McCura. Welcome back to the show. I appreciate it. Absolutely, man. So we're going to talk some Xavier. We're going to talk some Zip Him Up. But first, let's hear about you, man. What, what's going on in the season? You and Mike Dom over there and Samaja Christian. What, what's going on? Yeah, we're out in Italy. Uh, we're 16-6 and six right now. Uh, we got eight games left in the regular season. Um, we're playing pretty well as a, as a team. Uh, we were we ended fourth place last season, and now we're, we're sitting in third place um, behind Bologna and Milan. Uh, but things are going well. We're playing we're playing some really good basketball and having fun. Are there playoffs, or is it similar to you know how soccer is overseas, where it just ends and then there may be a Champions League type tournament? Yeah, there's there's uh, the top eight make the playoffs and then best of five and then best of seven when when you make the the finals last year we got past the first round and lost in the second um so we went home about june june 2nd or something we got home which is a long season but it was fun i do my best to bring up your shot over mike from tbt (laughs) how much do you bring it up not too much other than when i when we see it on social media uh I, that was my only three i made in the game so i'm, I'm glad it went in over him for sure <laughs> absolutely who else is on the squad this year besides the two of you anyone else new nobody really knew um we just got basically the same rosters last year um added a guy named demonte who's been over here for about 10 years uh but we got a, a little older roster experienced roster i'm I'm one of the youngest Americans, me and Mike. Um, so it's just veteran squad trying to trying to roll through these teams over here. <laughs> you got the baby out there with you, right? I do. Uh, she's not out here right now, but they went home for a little bit. Uh, but for the majority of the season, season they were out here, which makes it go a lot fi- faster. Last year was sometimes it was pretty slow by myself, but now it seems like the season's going pretty quick. So this year – is very different you got the baby in your life you got Xavier basketball being in March Madness not in the NIT how fun is yeah. this been for you getting to watch uh your Xavier guys it's been incredible um it's, it's pretty cool to see the program back to what I know it as is it making March Madness um it's been tough four or five years however long it's been um since they've been there but it's just cool to be able to watch them I don't know I'm not going to be able to watch this next game because it's going to be in the middle of the night for me, uh, which kind of sucks. But it's been really cool to see them win. Uh, that first game was was a little rough. Um, but the second one, they they picked it up, and I'm excited to see what they do against Texas. But Texas is a good team. Um, they got a lot of weapons as well. So I'm excited to see how, see how far they go. You know, eligibility aside, just pure talent and player, which of the current Xavier guys do you think would fit best on last year's zip them up team? I mean, you honestly can't go wrong with any of them. It's so it's the squad's super deep. Like they got a bunch of guys. Um, I think Nunji would help a ton just because he's huge and he's super skilled around the rim. Sule, Kunkel, Kobe, like they just, they're all really talented and they all bring something different to the table. And I think that if we get any of those guys on the team, that'd be a bonus for us, for sure. We got, we got to start recruiting them. <laughs> Who do you think wins five on five right now? The current Xavier team or last year's zip them up starting lineup? I mean, we we can't lose to them. It's not, I, I, I can never say that they're going to beat us <laughs> just as a competitive standpoint. <laughs> so when you, when you're watching March Madness this year, you know, you saw, Xavier's struggle against a 13 seed. You see Purdue, a one seed, go down. You ever sit back and just be like, holy shit, we were a fucking one seed in March Madness. That's crazy. No, yeah, definitely uh, watching the games is incredible to see the teams that are going down. But you often forget that like sometimes March Madness, it's, it's people's first time playing there. And as a previous player, I just I keep telling myself like, when I'm watching the games, I'm like, I see a lot of players that just kind of like go through the motions out there. And it's not, I don't know if it's nerves or, or whatever it is because it's March Madness, but I just see guys kind of going through the motions and not really playing too hard. Um, but 
most of the times it, it, it takes it takes a game to get there, which it might be too late um, for a lot of these teams because if you don't bring it right away, you're done. You go home. Uh, so, I mean, we went home early as a one seed as well, and we just – we kind of – play like shit and lost to Florida State. You know, it just it happens, but it's just I would I would go back to Barton Madness a heartbeat if I could. It's, it's some of the best basketball ever. Do you have a positive, so not the Florida State game, do you have a positive yeah. game or moment from your times in March Madness that, you know, really sticks out to you? I mean, for sure. When we beat Arizona, when Sean Miller was coaching, we went to Elite Eight. Uh, we just kind of ran out of juice. We Edmund Sumner was hurt for us. We were playing with limited guys. We ran out of juice against Gonzaga, but that win was probably the best feeling in the world. Um, and then just any win, any win in March is, is is pretty cool. And we didn't quite get to the final four, but that it was that that year was was an incredible year. So all your years, at Xavier, were were special. Sinta Center was absolutely packed. Did it feel a little bit? Like the golden days when you made that shot over Mike and the, the crowd was going crazy <laughs> last year? Because you you reacted and acted like it was the golden days. Yeah, no, it, it brought back some memories for sure. I, did, I didn't ever hit a game winner like that at Cintas, but it, it it felt like we were back there playing in college again, just with the fans and um, basically all those that the fans in that in Cintas just care so much and have so much love for the game it was pretty cool to see all those fans going crazy again <laughs> absolutely it's it sucks to you know talk about how seasons end but unfortunately unless you win a championship seasons end you know yeah. usually sour note so that florida tnt game you guys go down what do you you know if you're remembering clearly what do you think the biggest difference maker was in that game i don't know i, I just feel like um the, the the past TBT team like we we had really good players um but I don't think like I think our obviously you I've played with Karim Sean like Karim Kaiser Trey all those guys but it's like I feel like we were there just a couple of days before we started playing and just kind of I think we need a little bit more time for practice and stuff because we really we didn't run like plays we ran in college we were just kind of out there hooping. And I think if we have a little bit more system, um, that could take care of a lot of things and we could go a lot farther. But that Florida TNT team was super talented. I forget the guy's name, but that, that little guard was just splashing everything. <laughs> Chris <laughs> Warren. He was, he was, yeah, he was killing us. But we uh, we just probably got to be a little bit more prepared. And, I mean, it was really fun. It was a fun, quick tournament, just two games for us. But it was it was awesome. Um, we just got to be a little bit more dialed in and, and prepare a little bit better for, for this summer. I got two Stainbrook questions for you. Yeah. The first one is, do you think him getting off a flight from his Mexico championship literally 12 hours before your guys' first game played in it all to how your your tournament went? I mean, a little bit. I mean, everybody has their own stuff going on. Um, they're taking care of their own business. So it's it's still cool to get all those guys to come in and play again with them um, so, some years later. But – We'll definitely be more prepared uh, this summer than when we were last. I think you might know what my second question is about him. What the hell was on his ass in that one game? <laughs> I, to be honest, I, I stayed out of that business. I, I have no idea what's going on. I didn't even ask any questions. <laughs> I mean, a guy named Stainbrook has a stain on his shorts during the game. I mean, it doesn't, doesn't get better than that. It doesn't get any better. I didn't ask any questions, so I kind of kept to myself there. <laughs> Makes sense. JP, before before I let you go, I want to ask you this. Are you recruiting any other former Xavier players for this team? Forget, forget you know, the current guys, but just guys who haven't been on the team yet. Are you recruiting? Yeah, yeah we've, we've started that process. Me, Rick, and Samaj, we've kind of started to talk to a few people, but I'm not going to let any names out yet. Um, but we'll definitely we'll definitely have a squad this summer for sure. Is Mike Dobb gonna be on the squad? That's a whole that's a whole other thing. I can't make a comment on that. He kind of he kind of screwed us last year, but we'll, I won't talk about it. I think I, I no one really knows what truly went down there unless you know you're in the inner workings of the few teams. But the way that yeah. the Xavier fans, the Zipma fans, treated Mike 
was fantastic. I I, I, I loved it. I should have treated him worse. <laughs> um. All right. You know how we end this. Any questions for me? Um. No. What? I don't have. It's a leave. Trying... Well. No, I don't have any. You just broke the inside TBT code. And you really never do anything for us. You never wear the shirt. You never come up and yell in the camera after a shot. Like two different times. You, you, we, I still have your shirt. You want me to grab it? No, I need you to wear that next time. Um, I can ask any question. You can ask anything, preferably not about basketball. Damn, I was going to ask the basketball question, but um, it, can, it can be. No. I don't really have them some that are appropriate for this for this podcast. Fair enough. Maybe off. Fair enough. We'll take we'll take this version of the of the have any questions for for me <laughs> to, to offline. Then because you don't have one for me, I'm going to do the the listeners a solid and get one more out of you. Give yeah. me a give me a story from your season this year. Give me a JP ask story some something had to go down you had to be trash talking someone in the Almafi coast and then you went off for 30 <laughs> there's got to be something oh no there's nothing really too crazy other than just some pushing back and forth in the games um last game i gave someone a nudge and this guy pushed me back and the ref kind of threatened to kick us both out of the game two minutes into the game other than that um just a couple technicals here and there uh half the time i don't think the refs can understand what what i'm saying but they definitely do when they turn around and give me technicals when i say things to them <laughs> have you learned italian swear words to say to them no i on purpose i haven't learned them because if i do if i get a hold of them it's it's not gonna be good i'll probably get kicked out of a couple games i, I don't we don't need that it's like a drug for you learning swear words. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I'll stay away from the Italian swear words. My my favorite JP story is you like mouthing to me from the free throw line or from different parts <laughs> of the court during the game and hearing people be like, "Oh, JP's not even locked into the game. He doesn't care." And then you make the game winning 3 2 minutes later and it's like, <laughs> "Yeah, he's he's that's how he stays locked in, being being free <laughs> and careless, you know, interacting exactly. with crowd so i always back can't... yeah you gotta you gotta have fun with it you know it's, basketball is a great game and it's even more fun when you we can kind of joke around while you're doing it <laughs> absolutely all right jp mccura this was great as always talk soon all right thank you clocking out early that's the dish i don't like been getting paid since i was riding on the bike hit the pedal with the eighth hopping on the ninth flight i've been chilling out of sight i'll be at the bar tonight told the bartender go and take my car to swipe you try the same thing but your car get declined white rappers nowadays no we're not too hard to find i'm so dapper with my ways i'm gonna linger in your mind always told me good things look i'm too dumb to be patient but i've been way too patient riding bars in my basement i'm anxious in the real world it's time for me to say this the basics the talent in my mind i can't waste it my life is too safe it's my time for it's taking i'm baking my mind every day it's the same ish lazy my grind needs to get a new facelift coming from the underground and busting through the pavement rock with it and lean with it my team win it my team win it no rock Cause I'm swiping all their biddies while they swiping right up bumble.
let your girlie calls me daddy, but she only calls you uncle. But no, we not related, homie. No, we not some fam. You never get in clubs, you can't even get in Sam. You never get in dubs like the Browns from the 